Hi there, my name is Laura and welcome to the Equestrian Skill Builders Rider Position Show where we discuss riding position topics and share ideas and exercises to help you and your riders. If you'd like to improve your riding and training, win more ribbons at your next horse show, or generally like other horsey related stuff, then stay tuned because I think the exercises we're going to share with you today might very well change your riding forever in a good way. Guest hosting <laughs> with me today is Patricia Jellerson. Hi, Patricia. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. Good. It's starting to be a little more like fall here in Oklahoma. Maybe the hot weather's going away. So that makes me very happy. Yes, I got a sweater on today. Uh huh. It's getting cooler here, too. Mm hmm. If it's your first time here, thank you so much for joining us here today. And if it's not your first time here, thank you so much for joining us here today as well. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any new videos that we have coming out. And if you're on Facebook, thank you so much for joining us. And we hope that you comment and like and be involved with what we have going on today. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Patricia, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a large R judge. You recognized large R judge in the hunters in the equitation. And uh, I've been, I had my small R card for a long time before that. So I've been judging quite a while. I love it. I think it, it generally helps invigorate my teaching. I do a little bit of training as well. Um, invigorate my teaching and get me more excited about the sport to be in the judges booth. Don't you? Oh yes, certainly. I, I think um, that uh, seeing what comes in the ring gives me a really good impression of what needs to be done in the background and at homes and people training. But yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. I agree with you. Right. And, and my name is Laura, Laura Kellen May. I'm an equestrian Canada, senior judge, hunter, jumper, equitation and hack senior steward and competition coach specialist uh, with the high performance training. So if you are live here today with us, thank you so much for being live with us here today. And please, if you have any comments or questions, put them in the comments section or question section that we have here. We'll try to answer them. As we as love we questions. We love questions and send in videos too. Laura hosts this show every uh, Saturday morning. If you have any videos of yourself riding and that you want talked about, giving some pointers or, or some suggesting some exercises, let her know. Yeah. Some people do ask me about that. And Patricia also, she also comments on the videos and when we post them live, she's there as well. If you have any specific comments or questions for her too. So we've got a general topic that we want to talk about today, and that is what you should do or what happens or if you have a refusals, refusals in the show ring, or if you find that your horse is refusing jumps at home and what you, what you can do about it. Right. Yeah. And I think the, the segue to that a little bit is, you know, starting a horse correctly. And that's that's a whole show by itself. So we're not going to go a lot into that topic. But I, I heartily encourage you that if you're a green or a novice rider, it's, it's very difficult to take on a green horse. You know, I don't usually recommend green on green, but definitely be working with the trainer that can help you and and bring that horse along. But um, I think starting them the right way is definitely a key to preventing refusals in the future, not rushing them along, not uber facing them. I totally agree with you. Yeah. So, um, but before we get into the training part, can we talk a little bit about, you know, what happens in the show ring? I know that, uh, being on the other side of the fence in the judge's booth, you see a horse that refuses. And what do you see happen a lot of times, Pat, when you see a horse refusing in the ring? If, if you were in the ring, your horse refused, what would you do so that, it, one, it doesn't happen again, and um, two, to get through that class? Well, I think, you know, refusals are, are um, an occasional refusal is normal. You know, sometimes I've seen riders that 
don't approach the jump straight or jump ahead of their horse or, um, you know, the jump is an extra spooky jump. So it, it does happen occasionally. And I don't think you should let it wreck your, your psyche when it does. But as we'll talk about a little later, if it happens on a real frequent basis, I think it, it needs to be addressed. But normally, if I see a rider have a refusal, I like to see them take a moment and collect themselves. You mentioned this earlier, not rush right into it. But yeah, I mean, you already have the refusal. So if you take a few minutes to reorganize, it's not going to hurt you further. And come to the jump either at a trot if it's a low jump and you feel more confident that way or cantering it again. Um, you know, it's just important to give your horse a good experience and reinforce that if their refusal, especially if it has to do with rider error or the horse generally being worried about the jump, yeah. not to over-discipline. You know, I, 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 I do I not like... There's rules against that too, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't mind, you know, one, reaching back and one little slap with the crop to get their attention, but I certainly do not want to see anyone wailing on the horse or kicking and spurring and, you know, that I, I will excuse a rider for excessive use of the yeah. stick. Well, I think you have to, right? Mm -hmm. That's smart. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. So horses' welfare is important. Yeah, exactly. So if you do have a refusal when you're on course in the, show, in the competition ring, first thing for me is just know that it, it happens it's mm -hmm. not something new it's not just happening to you there may have been people before you had, that have come in and had a refusal there may be people that are coming in after you that are going to have a refusal or run out or whatever it is uh so don't don't beat yourself up about it while you're there just take count to 10 to get your breath back, get yourself organized. It may mean shortening your reins. If your horse runs out at one side, swap your stick over to the side the horse runs out at. And when you reapproach the jump, get it organized so you give your horse a chance to reapproach and have a good approach to that jump. And like what uh, Patricia says, if it's not a huge jump and your horse is more comfortable trotting, trot the jump to let the horse get his confidence back yeah right? and and when you circle around to jump it again give yourself enough room you know so many times i see the riders wheel good. around and take a short approach and the yeah. horse is just as worried as they were the first time whereas if you take a longer approach give them time to see the jump reinforce your your aids going to it then you'll have more success than just wheeling them around and trying again yeah, I like where you say give your horse time to kind of see what's happening because sometimes okay. they do need to, if it's a new jump for them, the horse needs to process what it is that they're looking at and to see what it is. Particularly, I think that's particularly true for a green horse or mm -hmm. a, a new rider that right. they, they also have to kind of process things a little bit too right right and there's that that thing too that we talk about all the time and that's like putting putting your fears aside if you can you know even if they're still there that's perfectly normal but you just want to try to communicate to your horse that that you're confident and that there's nothing to be worried about even if you feel that deep down inside you can you can fake it enough to for the horse to be convinced i think <laughs> yeah, what's the old saying? throw your throw your heart over mm -hmm. and then the horse will follow you mm -hmm. something like that yeah yeah and uh yeah definitely and what um you had talked about some a few things to um, to uh, keep in mind if your horse is is refusing, especially on a regular basis, about different things that you should think about. Yeah, so I think the, the first one is like don't don't fret about it, and because it happens, it happens to mm -hmm. people at all levels, and mm -hmm. uh, it kind of turn it into a training session for you and your horse. Mm 
Mm -hmm. uh, if you do have a refusal, if you're in a hunter ring, what would you give a, a hunter with a refusal on course? 40, 40 for the first refusal. Yeah. 40 for the first refusal. Mm -hmm. And if it's in the jumper ring, I guess if you're in a speed class, it's going to um, time faults. If you're going to be the time, you may have time faults if you're not very uh, efficient the next of it, and you're going to have faults against you, but not going to be too bad because, as you say, there may be people in front of you that have done worse. Yeah, I um, and remember, it's in the in the horse shows, the hunter shows. It's you're allowed three refusals before you excuse, but in the jumpers, it's only two. Yep. So this is two is all round. It, it is. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of talk here that people would, judges and professionals would prefer that because if the horse refuses twice, a lot of times the third time is kind of even worse. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So. Something happened. Something. Something's going on. It's not going to happen. And you know, I guess too, if you have a hundred people, hundred people in your class, right? Uh, if you have a refusal. There's, you know, thanks. But still, it's a 40. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so, it, yeah, the the first thing, I think if you if it's a chronic thing with your horse that it's refusing, uh, depending on the age of the horse and how experienced the horse is, I would check it for possible health issues, uh, bit issues, saddle fitting issues, you know, if you're concerned, bit. are you in the correct bit? Yep, exactly. So do some investigation with respect to that. So it, because you, if a horse starts to refuse, starts to stop, it could be it's sore somewhere. So mm -hmm. if you've got recently got a new saddle, check your saddle for fit, get the saddle fitter back out. Or if you've changed the bridle, change the bit. If you've done something different, change the footing on your horse, change the farrier. Yeah. I mean, it would be nice if we could just say, Hey horse, why are you all of a sudden starting to refuse <laughs> and have them answer? No, they don't answer. Unfortunately. <laughs> so that would be the first thing is cross that right off your list. Mm -hmm. that, you know, he's sound saddle fitting. Good. The footing is good. His feet are good. His legs are good. So then you just kind of move on from there. Yeah. And um, I guess uh, this, the other things that you mentioned was, were, uh, is the jump too high? You know, sometimes we overface our horses and their way of telling us is, is refusing. You know, is the jump too high? Is the jump too technical? Is your horse not ready for an in and out yet? You know, that, that kind of thing. Right. I totally agree with that. Yeah, that's exactly right. So once you get the, is my horse healthy out of the way, then you go to the jump. Is it a different jump? Like too technical. That is like the, the you're talking combinations and uh, like maybe a Liverpool type thing. Mm -hmm. They just don't mm -hmm. know. Or, and then if you get into the derby situations, is there a hill approach? Is there slightly downhill, slightly uphill? Is there a ditch in front? Is there a ditch behind? And then you get cross country stuff too. So mm -hmm. there's all kinds of little technical things that uh, that could frighten a horse. Yeah, and that's all we're facing too. Uh, not just the height. The height is one way of overfacing, but then there's the technicality of it too that you're overfacing the horse. Absolutely. So how do you address that? Well, I think it's important to be working with the trainer because you need a ground person. You know, a lot of times we can't tell. Like you can, as a trainer, I can say, okay, uh, you're you're coming back a little too soon, not giving the horse time to complete the jump and they're discouraged or you're jumping ahead and throwing his balance off. You know, those are things that are often hard to tell if you're by yourself. So if you're having with trouble with refusals, the first thing I would say is if you don't already have one, get a trainer to, to help you and give you advice. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. 
And I think, you know, doing your homework, it's like we've talked about before. Don't ask your horse to do anything that you haven't already done at home. And I always tell my riders that we're going to show a level less than we're practicing at home. If we're, if we're pretty consistent at three foot at home, the first time you, you show, we're going to, we're going to go at a level lower. We're going to start maybe at two nine and see how that works because I want when when you go to a horse show I don't want it to be something that's on the edge of their um comfort zone I want right. to be, do something that's well within the rider and the horse's comfort zone to give them a, a good experience yeah I uh, that's totally true because once you get to the horse show there's the added pressure of one being watched and being judged and you're your friends are there. Oh, maybe your friends aren't there anymore. Family may be there. <laughs> right? There's not not the way it was. Yeah. So there there's the, the added stress. So you want to make sure that it's the jump itself is not going to be stressful. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. like where you say don't do anything, don't do something with your horse over over fences or at the horse show or jumping that you haven't already schooled and to have down pat on the flat. At home. And I think a big part of that is dressing up your jumps a little. And by that, I mean not just jumping post and rails, because most of the time, if you go to a horse show, you're going to have brush, you're going to have flower boxes. And, and even though you might be on a budget or you might have limited jumps, you can still cut, anyone can cut some brush and put it in front of their jumps. You can take those little landscape timbers. I think they're like six feet or something and drill holes in them and get flowers from the dollar store and sure stick them is. in. You know, there's, there's all sorts of um, different things you can do at home to dress up your jumps a bit and make sure your horse isn't surprised at a horse show. So there's a landscape. Oops. Can't see it. There's a landscape timber, timber. right? Mm -hmm, right. It's it's flat on the top and bottom, mm -hmm. and you can drill holes, drill holes in the top, and then stick stick flowers in or stick brush in. Those are great because they don't roll. Right, right. I love those. And you know, it's jumps aren't hard to build if you're not a good builder yourself. That you could have a handyman in your area that could help you. You know, a gate is easy to build a, a box that you can paint with brick or stone is easy to build. Um, you know, the, a lot of those things are, are not too difficult to do. So, but at the very least you can do brush and flowers. Yeah. It, it, brush and flowers. And I know that mm -hmm. I used to um, get a tarp, mm -hmm. a small tar tarp from the dollar store and, wrap a pole in it mm -hmm. wrap it around a pole or two mm -hmm. poles so it would just be a pole wrapped in a blue tarp mm -hmm. and then i would or two poles wrapped a tarp like a scroll and then i would unroll it so mm -hmm. it would just be something else on on the ground so if the horses got to a horse show they saw kind of a liverpool thing they say okay got it Right, right. And when, whenever you add something like that, like you're adding brush for the first time or flowers or the tarp, like you said, go a little lower, you know, give, give your horse a little more confidence by if you've been, again, if you've been jumping two six, maybe do that at two foot first, you know, get, yeah. always give, it's so hard once the horse has stopped that is in their mind. You know, if you can kind of have the forethought to make it easy enough for your horse introducing new things that they don't have that refusal to begin with, that goes a long way. Yeah. Comfortable, make them comfortable and safe mm -hmm. and, and uh, understanding of what it is that you want them to do. So is it one pole on the ground, two poles on the ground? Am I supposed to jump them both together? Or am I stepping between them? Three poles on the ground. Now I'm, three poles in a cross rail, three poles in a vertical, three yeah. poles in an oxer. So you're gradually building it up so they understand. I think it's really important that, and all horses are different too. So it, what uh, you do with your horse is going to be different than what I do with mm -hmm. my horse because they think differently. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. and, and maybe you get to a horse show and you find that 
oh, my horse only spooking or running out at the white jumps, or it's only the right. horse, or it's only the ones that are beside the wall here or something. So mm -hmm. you just don't know what's going to be happening. So you have to kind of train for every eventual eventuality and, right. and start low, something easy, so that the horse is safe. Yes, we had, a, um, I had a couple of experiences relating to this topic. We had a show last week in Tyler, Texas. It was an A show. And we bought a couple of young horses, both their first shows. One was a pony, five-year-old, and the other was a four-year-old um, horse. And uh, the four-year-old had been another place schooling and had um, been off the farm a few times. And we thought he was ready to do a little two foot course, but you know, he went in and jumped the first jump and just jumped out of his skin and kind of scared himself and jumped every other jump. Like he was going to, it was going to jump up and bite, you know? So we were like, well, we'll give him, a, and I had a very good rider on him. I said, we'll give him another class to see if he settles. And he still seemed very apprehensive about everything. So I said, well, let's back down and just school him, you know, let him hang out. We'll, we'll hack him a couple of times a day and then school him over some jumps in the schooling area and not force that issue, you know, because I felt like it, it wasn't going to get any better. He needed more work at home before we did that. Yeah, you want it to be a positive experience, right? Right, right. And I really recommend for anybody that if you're showing your horse for the first time that you take them to the show with the expectation that if things go well, you show. But if, if they need the mileage to hang around the horse show and see the sights and maybe just get ridden in traffic and that kind of thing, then be ready to back down. You know, you always want to do what's best for your horse and what's best for their future. Short-term gratification often leads to long-term problems, right? <laughs> exactly. So uh, we do have a, a this here, this is the, the poles on the ground, uh, started mm -hmm. off with one pole on the ground and gradually built it up until there were several poles on the ground. And I noticed that these poles, uh, make sure you get in the middle of the, ju of the jumps. And you can see it's got a wider band in the middle. Mm -hmm. And if you have a wider band in the middle, you know exactly where to aim. You could see this horse and rider, they're, they're quite straight, but they're not quite in the middle. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to show people if you are building your own jumps to make it so that you can see exactly where the middle is. And in this case, you can really see that the widest band is in the middle so that you know right. exactly where you're aiming. Right. And I like colorful jumps. I mean, even for my hunters, I use a lot of jumper poles. You know, I like to throw a lot of variety at them and, and uh, change the jumps up, you know, have maybe three or four rails in a two, six jump to make it very solid. Another time, have it very airy, have colored poles, have hunter poles, you know, whatever you can do to kind of mix it up. Oh yeah, this is great here. Yeah, unfortunately, this one won't go any bigger. So this is a, a jump that has the guide rails on it. Mm -hmm. If you have problems with the horse getting very crooked or you have a horse that's um, a green horse that you want to make sure they can't run out. That's a, or you do have a horse that tries to run out. That's very good. And notice that the way that it's set with the poles on the edge of the um, vertical rail. You don't want those guide rails, the end sticking out too far over the vertical rail. Yeah, I think there's a specification at the that you're not allowed a certain amount over when you, if you use them at, uh, you can't use them at FEI level, but I know they can in Canada in the warm up. but uh, there's, I think it's um, a foot. I think it's a foot is a max, but I, I checked my rule book on that. We don't, I, we're not allowed to use those in the schooling area. We're, we're allowed to use them on the ground if they're nine feet away, but not the schooling area, not the raised poles like that. Okay. 
that's awesome to know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then I do a little diagram of uh, cross rails and guide rails. Easy peasy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the rails on the ground. I usually will always start a horse with, with nice wide ground rails on the ground. Just because it eliminates that problem of the wiggling and the moving around just helps them keep a little straighter and more focused on the jump. Yeah, it prevents them from kind of sliding out to the side. And this is mm -hmm. this is good for young horses, but also for those sneaky school horses that kind of just kind of go. <laughs> yeah. Know all the little tricks. Right, right. And so, do, uh, do you ever use them on the landing side? Yes, same thing. Yeah, I'll use them on the landing side. Usually um, the landing side I won't use yet for the really green horses because they tend to kind of, ignore the jump a little and focus on the landing pole. But um, if you have a horse that consistently is landing and drifting, I mean, I, you want the rider to correct that. Don't, don't get me wrong. I mean, you don't want to use poles in, in it, in, 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 uh, what's the word I want in place of the rider steering the horse. But if you have a consistent problem and you need to give the rider an idea of what you're looking for, um, I, I use them quite a lot. Okay, so we have a video that you brought us uh, of your rider, and you can see the poles on the placing poles on the ground. This one's right. Okay. And if you were starting a horse, you know, a lot of times they'll just trot over the jump like that, and they won't really make an effort. That doesn't bother me. I don't. I don't really want to jazz them up. Usually, this second time you come with a cluck or a little squeeze and they usually go right over it. So the, there's the guide rails. Mm -hmm. They are how far apart from the, what's the distance from the end of the guide rail to the jump? That's probably about six feet, I think. Okay, about six feet. Five or six, yeah. And it's the width of the jump. It looks like you have them a width of the jump. I have them pretty wide. Um, I, It's probably a foot in from the jump from each standard, a foot in from each standard because yeah, I don't yeah. want again I don't want the horse to focus on the poles and ignore the jump I just want them to kind of be there in the out of the corner of his eyes so that he's encouraged to stay straight yeah if you put them too narrow sometimes the horse gets too pressurized too and it kind of makes them a little tense because they are closed in and they don't they don't really understand what the game is here but right. the, it's easy helps to keep the rider straight little cross rail with a solid ground line yes ground lines i think are very important for green horses i i don't start playing with the ground lines until my horse gets fairly well along so there we again we're just kind of not really jumping the jump but that's okay you know the more important thing is that the horse is going forward willingly and and you have it in the middle Mm -hmm. of the ring right so you can come from both directions and you can land and turn you don't have to deal with if the horse lands in canters you don't have to deal with the lead change you can just turn in the direction that they're they've landed yeah easy exercise ex good use of the the guide rails to get your horse mm -hmm. straight to the jump so hopefully mm -hmm. that helps to um stop the horse from refusing right right okay so what's running the out yeah. running and there's, out. and i tell people there's two kinds of refusals right there's there's the horse that stops at the base of the jump there's the horse that runs out and a horse that runs out so many times i'll see people go faster to the jump you know to me when they run out that's not a speed issue that's a steering issue so there's no need to, to gallop your horse on down to the jump. I think if the horse stops at the base, then you have an impulsion forward speed issue. But I think it's important to realize those are treated two, two very different ways. Yeah, it's, a, it's often, well, the ones I see that kind of run out to the side, it's, it's you should be going back to your flat work and mm -hmm. teaching the horse to 
keep straight. And and I see if if it's a uh, an experienced rider on a green horse, you can see them riding that horse and staying straight and getting the horse that ho the, you could see the horse trying to say, okay, I want to go by it this way. And the rider will say, no, you're not. And okay, I'll go. This no, you're not. So that that's a, a rider correction. But if the rider isn't uh, as experienced, let's say, and on a kind of a crafty school horse, the school horse are just kind of go. Mm -hmm. you, know, you see that a lot, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, absolutely. Those school horses are pretty smart. And I think we talked a little earlier before we went on about disciplining the horse when you when you do have a refusal in the ring. And I don't mind reaching back in a light tap with your stick, but I do not want to see you hitting your horse multiple times. I will definitely excuse a rider for that or over spurring or just general mild abuse. It's mild abuse and it's not going to give your horse any more confidence. No, not acceptable. Mm -hmm. Not acceptable for sure. And I think a lot of people don't realize in general that, I mean, you're allowed to carry a stick without penalty, but if you're in the ring, whether it's a flat class or a jumping class and you have to use a stick, that's a, a big deduction. Now, granted, I would rather see a rider use a little stick than refuse a jump if that's what it's going to take. But um, you do have a deduction when you use the stick. Do you deduct for voice too? If it's excessive and depending on the class, if it's like a short stirrup class or, or a little beginner class and they want to give a cluck or a little woe under their breath. But if it, the rider's talking to the horse all the way around the ring, yes, that's definitely a deduction. And if the trainer is helping obnoxiously from the rail, you know, that's, that's a deduction too. Oh, you take marks off for that. Well, you know, if it's, well, if, it's excessive, know. if it's excessive, if it's excessive, not right? a lot, but I will a little bit because again, in a short stirrup class, that's fine, you yeah. know, but if, if you're, um, if you're, uh, uh, in a, in a, in a class where the rider should be on their own and you have a trainer going leg here, leg, whoa, leg, whoa, outside spur you know, more pace. I mean, they're basically telling the rider how to ride the course. Turn, turn now, go. Yeah, turn now, you know. I think, I think my rule of thumb is if I can hear the trainer, if, if I can hear the trainer, the coach from the in gate when I'm halfway down the ring, that's too loud. Mm -hmm. And I call down to the in gate and say that that is too much coaching. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. Uh, Call down the end gate first. Yeah, and and you know, a lot of times at a schooling show, you can't do this at a rated show. I mean, it's not that I'm not sympathetic to problems. If there's a horse that is a rider that's having um, multiple plot problems with the horse, I'll say to the trainer, you know, why don't you grant if we're not totally backed up and it's not a huge show, I'll say, why don't you go in the ring for a minute and help your rider? Oh, that's nice. You know, something like that but that's a schooling show sure exactly just yeah. a schooling show yeah so this is the same horse and rider mm -hmm. so this is the second time after they kind of walked over it and i just had her give a little cluck and a squeeze and so the horse jumped it nicely but you can see there's no no excessive you know you don't just because they trot over it the first time you don't have to come back great guns the second time Show um, the video of the little pony, if you don't mind, Laura. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Have... So just, it is the, you had a short stirrup person. Right. This is, a, well, no, actually it's before that. It's like a crossrails class where they're allowed to trot oh, okay. or canter. It's like the beginner. We call them here the opportunity classes at the A shows. It's for riders that, it's their first introduction to a show. They don't have to pay any um, association fees. So it's a little more reasonable for them. And it's a great program that they added to the rated shows to help your beginner riders. So this on the, is this the correct one. Yes. Okay, this is the opposite 
of the green horse that we bought that we thought needed to back down a little. This pony first show, five years old, we thought um, did great, schooled and, and was quiet. This is a little nine-year-old girl on it. So we went ahead and, and showed it and she's just trotting over these little tiny cross rails and, but she's working on keeping the horse straight and keeping a good pace. And, and it was just a real good experience for his first show, just to go around and see all the sights and get used to being the only one in the ring. That's awesome. It's so cute. Isn't it cute? Yeah. She's, a, she's a good little rider, huh? Nice little loop in the reins, you know, she's steering with the leg rather than holding too tight and just doing a great job. And, and like I said, the, the next show, the pony will be ready to probably trot in and canter out. And then the show after that, canter everything. But this was the very first step. He, the, the horse and rider seem unperturbed by the the whatever's going on in there right right it, yeah good good confidence confidence building you know and i think a lot of times as uh, riders we're very concerned with our confidence but you've got to be concerned with the horse's confidence as well okay so let's go back to this one here the video share this is the same rider again trotting in cantering out am i sharing yes good all right trotting in cantering out nice and straight tan landing on the correct lead because the jump's in the middle and she's able to do that you know great great you know, where you want to start with a beginner rider or a beginner horse, just something like this that's a good experience and easy and leaves a, a positive idea in their mind that jumping is not a horrible thing and not a thing to get excited about. That's why on young horses and young riders, I like to introduce jumps pretty early, always starting with poles on the ground first. And then going to little cross rails and then they, they probably will stay at that that level for quite a while but it helps balance the rider it helps teach the horse early that jumping is no big deal you know sometimes if you flat a horse for six months and then all of a sudden you introduce jumps they're like oh wow this is something special something i need to get excited about where you kind of throw them in as you go Little by little, they, they have less of a reaction. Yeah. So uh, the, the pony and the horse show, mm -hmm. she was doing cross rails. And those cross rails were dressed with brush. Mm -hmm. uh, what was she doing at home? At home she that confidence. So when she got to the horse show, it was just like another, another, another lesson, really. Right. We started the pony on um, poles on the ground. And then we'd set like a, a little... Four, four poles around the ring as if it was a jump, practice our warm-up circle, trotting the poles. Then we went to little cross rails. And then actually before she went to this show, she was trotting in and cantering out of a bigger cross rail. But we wanted to start, you know, at a very easy low level. And I think she was reserve champion. She nice. did a good job, yeah. She sure looked comfortable for sure mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and now the next one is uh canter same horse and rider cantering in cantering out so we've had a progression here and i like to use the placement pole the the one stride because for a green horse or green rider i feel it takes away the equation of finding the right distance you know just just set a pole uh um, uh, one canter stride away. And I okay, think that's people are listening. How far apart should be the one canter stride? I usually set it at about 15, 16, 
a little cross rail like this. Let's see if I can get it all in one. You can just see it. There's the canter stride. So if they jump in, jump in, do one canter stride, jump out. Yeah, I'd say depending on your horse's stride, anywhere from yeah. like 16 to 18. If it's, it's a, a little school scatter. horse or a pony, more like yeah. 15 or 16. So that's like an easy, steady canter stride in. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Horse is quiet. Now, how do you know when to move on? I think you know? when, the, when the rider is staying with the horse and the horse is is jumping it in a steady, consistent pace, um, I'll probably stay with that those kind of placement poles maybe about a week, uh, you know, two or three lessons, and then move on to trying a low jump without the placement pole and um, see how they do. Again, you know, it's it's – if you have a seasoned horse, they don't mind a bad distance. You know, occasionally they're they're a little more thick skin, but a, a green horse starting out, you, you just don't want to hit too many bad distances because I think it makes it uncomfortable for them. And then they don't think jumping is quite so much fun anymore. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here is the, the next step that you uh, – added on to here so we we did it at the trot they trotted in trotted out they trotted in cantered out cantered in cantered out and everything is so even and steady the horse maintains the same rhythm they don't pop they don't run after the jump the rider's staying with them all the boxes are checked off so you do this and then we would actually go to a vertical with the cantering the pole in. So there, yeah. and then we would come to this exercise. I didn't add in a, a vertical, but this is a little figure eight over the jump. And it's just very good. First of all, teaching the horse to approach the jump at a little bit of an angle. So they still realize that they have to jump it and working on your rhythm. Very good for working on the rhythm and the rider steering. And you can start to make the, the, the loop at the end of your figure eight a little shorter if you want to be a little more challenged. You can also do it at the canter and depending on your rider's life level, either do a simple change in the corners if you need it or flying change. But it's, it's, a, it's a good exercise. Yeah. This is my student, Mackenzie, who's my guinea pig for a lot of my videos, except I have to make a disclaimer. I did not know she was going to wear a sleeveless shirt. I told her no more sleeveless shirts in lessons. <laughs> oh, did you tell her that? Awesome. I did. I, did. I told uh, one of my students that too. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, actually, when I saw this, I said, oh, she's got a little tank top on. That's yeah, no, no tank tops allowed. Yeah. I tell her that it shows, but I guess she thought that it was allowed in lessons. I just thought that it was probably very warm and... Maybe you allow that, yeah. It was, but even when it's warm, I still make them wear coats and whatnot, you know. Yeah. I, I've done it, and I survive. They'll survive. Yeah, so I this is a great exercise, and this is something that I, I don't do a lot of, actually. But yeah. I think I'm going to start uh, doing this in uh, a schooling exercise. Right, Mindy, you can start with the If you're listening, Mindy, we're going to be doing this. Good. Um, you can start with a pole on the ground, of course, and then work your way up. I don't usually do it with a cross rail because then they're jumping the high side. I just, I do it with a small vertical. Yeah, that's, I, I, I like that exercise. You know, it's always drilled in, in, uh, into us that, uh, you should be in the middle straight. and approach at 90 degrees and, and that type of thing. But I, I'm going to start using that. Well, it's good for steering because even though when you're coming in an angle like that, you've got to be have your leg on your horse so they don't run out. You know, you've got to yeah. be steering the horse straight with your leg. And also in the jumper classes and the equitation classes, a lot of times you'll end up jumping a jump at a little bit of an angle. So Lindy, was oh, Lindy has a comment. Yeah. 
we did this with the mare. It helped her not to make a bid at the jump. Yeah. Very good. Teaches some patience. Exactly, Lindy. Yeah. Awesome, Lindy. You're way ahead of me. <laughs> okay. So here's, uh, here's us. Now, this is a, a horse and rider, uh, a greenish mm -hmm. horse and experienced rider. They're doing bounces, and this is the way you introduce uh, that. At least I introduce bounces: is you start with one, mm -hmm. and then rather than put them straight across or cavaletti, I p alternate them like cross rails, but alternate one high side and then the other high side on the other side. I do exactly the same thing. It helps to keep the horse straight, but gives them something very. Um, non-threatening yeah and it, it's kind of good because you know when we talked about the 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 school horse you know mm -hmm. you can see the school horses they they kind of serpentine through mm -hmm. because they jump the low side on this side and the low side on that side so uh and you could see this horse he's kind of rushing through and not really mm -hmm. Uh, sitting back on his hindquarters. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping to do another session with this horse. We're going to do the same exercise mm -hmm. and see if he can. Uh, yeah. But the rider's doing an excellent job. You know, know she's staying nice, nice and so still, odd. has a good release over the jump, but very good control. I, lo I love what she's doing there. Yeah. Uh, uh, see these? Oh, yeah, the jump cups. Yeah. No, no, no jump cups. No jump. I try. I think I tried to take it off, but these jump cups—they've been out all oh, season, so the thing. pin is yeah stuck in there. Yeah, sometimes that happens, but the reason we take them off is because I'm sure at some point most of us that have been teaching for a while have seen someone fall off and hit the jump cup. So. So I wanted to share that. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Yeah, very good. Very good. Good exercise for the rider's position. Good exercise to teach the horse patience and um, and to help their jumping style. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I think that's it. Yeah. So, so what else we have here? Uh, image of that. Oh yes, and the other thing to uh, to help your your horse get to the other side of the jump is to offer lots of praise. If they do it properly, make right. sure that you give yourself a hug and give your horse a hug too. Even, particularly if they're starting out, if there's something new, mm -hmm. uh, and you want to make sure that the horse really understands what it is that that that's happening but i think a, a lot of times praising the horses is, uh, is undervalued you know i think horses pick up on that and and the same thing when when a rider comes to a bad distance and the horse jumps the jump by the first thing i always say is oh give your horse a pat you know he was very good to you there and you want to reward him for doing his job yeah exactly that and 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 sometimes and if even Sometimes it doesn't have to be a really huge big pad. It can just be nice, a quick little, exactly. like, you know, quick that's one, exactly yeah. what I wanted you to do. You're doing the right thing. Just mm -hmm. something. And then sometimes it does need to be, okay, stop, loose rein, give them a sugar cube or some sort of treat, mm -hmm. depending mm -hmm. on, on what things that you're de dealing with. And in go ahead, Pat. No, I was just going to say, and, and I, I like to use voice too. Um, as, as far as teaching a horse immediately what a cluck means, because I feel like that can save the day a lot of times in a sticky situation, you know, if they instantly respond to that cluck by going forward, or a little woe with your voice, I always settle a horse with a little woe with your voice. But um, was it in the pre-show we talked about um, talking too much and getting penalized, or was that Yes, yeah, exactly. I, I think so i think we talked about that yeah mm -hmm. uh, talking too much you penalize for talking too much yes if it's consistently done all the way around the course or and maybe not by by penalize i guess i mean more of a tiebreaker 
you know, if the whole, if the person has a good course and there's another one that has a good course without talking or even makes a slight mistake without talking, I'll give that writer the edge. And well, and there's, uh, there's also a uh, good boy, good boy, good boy, good boy after or good girl, good girl, good girl after every single jump mm -hmm. versus at the end of the round saying, good boy, give your horse a pat. Exactly. Uh, um, there's a difference there. And even saying good girl and you're thinking well really that wasn't really that good exactly that makes it that cracks me up when a horse is being kind of bad and the rider is trying to encourage it by saying good horse good boy good boy good That's girl i'm like good. I, I wouldn't nail him but i wouldn't exactly praise him yeah exactly <laughs> And um, so the other thing I think we kind of touched on too is to introduce interesting things early on. Like you, you started introducing the jumping a little bit at an angle and having your, even your novice rider with the cross rails jumping similar things at home before you even got to the horse show. So Right, right. It's, it's very easy to, um, dress up a jump that like we talked about with brush or flowers and it makes a huge difference because a lot of times when your horse gets to a show that's a big change for them to see a jump that's wider with brush when they're used to jumping just a narrow jump or to see the flowers you know a lot of times the flowers are a big surprise to them and it's not just for the horses either right Right. right. If you get to the horse show and you haven't seen baskets of flowers underneath the jumps, you're just going, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. And you'll say, my horse is going to spook at those flowers. Well, they are now if you're thinking about that. <laughs> Absolutely. It always cracks me up, too, when you have a rider that says, my horse doesn't like white gates. And I tend Fill to think the blank. you are the one that really doesn't like white gates. I, I don't think your horse really can tell the difference between a white gate and a green gate or whatever. You and know? if you find that you have a horse that doesn't like white gates, mm -hmm. then get a bucket of white paint and mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, some white palettes or whatever you can find and I, I know what I had. Uh, I mean, I, I didn't spend a lot of money building super duper jumps, but what I did do was take some plywood uh -huh. and I cut it in half or quarters and I made a little, cool. put, a, put a hinge on the top. So uh -huh. I would have a, a coop like this or uh -huh. like this, so it would be lower or higher like it uh -huh. be three or it could be two feet oh that's a great idea yeah and i painted them brick wool mm -hmm. type mm -hmm. or white type or flower types uh, and it was not maybe show quality but it was a filler that i could use so that when i did get to a horse show the horse was going okay it's it's something underneath the jump with some color and i kind of know what's happening Absolutely. Hay bales, straw bales. I've used those too. Set them under or in front of a jump to give it a little more width. Um, Do boxes. You go to the dollar store and buy flowers? Oh, yes. Bo dollar store is my favorite place to buy flowers for sure. And if, if you can make a little box, or your dad or your husband can make a little box, you know, that you can, um, that you can paint either with stone or, or with brick that, you know, anything you can think of to kind of prepare yourself and your horse. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So what's on your, this week or next week, what are you doing this week and next? Week? I'm judging a schooling show this up? week, this Saturday. Yes. And uh, you're judging tomorrow, right? I'm judging tomorrow. That's right. I'm judging a dressage show. So I've got all my things organized for that. This oh, so it's your diagram. You're so organized. So, well, I don't know the tests and I don't do a lot of dressage. So I drew out all of the movements. So movement one is come down the center line. Then they track right. Then they do turn across the ring. So 
that's that. And then I made my list of how they are scored. So 10 yeah, is excellent. Yeah, I mean, all prepared. Yeah. That's my cheat sheet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, um, you know, we judges, it, it's, it's a lot of preparation sometimes that you may not know about. I know with me, it's always keeping up with the rule changes. There's so many rule changes all the time. And it keeping up with the rule changes and and your um, your uh, paperwork is always so important. You're you know keeping a stagger of the order and keeping clear writing clearly enough. I'm kind of famous for that. I'll make a scrawl and then I'll be like, oh, what, what was that? <laughs> Do you find it different also now with the horses coming in in groups of four? Or how, how, like, do you have more groups coming? How, how we, we had, um, we had at this last show last week, we had full, like, we had under saddle classes with oh. 12 or 12 or horses or so. Yeah. It, um, so uh, they're still coming in the ring. I think the, the main changes are on the jog. You don't have to jog anymore. They take your, opening circle, I think, or your closing circle in, um, in account rather than coming back to job. And then the confirmation classes, you model classes, you have to keep a wider distance and wear your mask. So, but they still had at the show full under saddle classes. So, yeah, but of course. Are you doing under saddles at the show you're judging? Yes. Yeah. Yes. This show is, kind of a mishmash there's one ring has jumpers and the um higher hunters the other ring is the lower ring that has um like short stirrup beginner rider things like that two foot hunter and it's mixed up with jumping and equitation flat and under saddle flat classes excellent mm -hmm. So uh, uh, next week, I'm going to be on, on Sunday, mm -hmm. and we've got Catherine Dykeman coming on. She oh, I know Catherine. She's from Texas, right? Yeah. How do you know mm -hmm. her? I know Catherine, yeah. I know her because I used to be in Austin before I moved to. Um, and so I've judged some IEA shows for yeah. her, she's or maybe the, it was IHSA. I don't remember. She's the coach, I think, of the texas team or yes or? yes maybe it was intercollegiate then yeah yeah and, I, so and i did she, a few shows for her mm -hmm. she was the winner of the 2019 retired racehorse project show jumping mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so yeah she did a great her. job with that yeah yes and then the following week we're going to be on the saturday with joey gatlin who's a fei grand prix rider Oh, nice. That's the plan right now. Anyway. Okay. So we are, at, well, we've got two minutes left, but we're going to be out of time. And so I want to thank you, Patricia. Thank you. For coming on again today. Really appreciate it. It's fun. Great I've had great fun. You. Thank you so much for asking me. Yeah. Well, we'll get you on again. Yeah, you're my go-to. <laughs> and send in those questions. Send Laura some questions and pictures. She loves those pictures and questions. Yes, we do. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Patricia. Any final words? Just uh, practice at home. You know, make, make sure you've got your practice under your belt and you're not going to have any surprises, whether it's taking your horse to another farm or a horse show or on a trail ride or Whatever you do, do your, your work at home first. Great, great words. And now go use this stuff and go hug your horse. Thanks <laughs> now. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.